Hi there, this is Philip from Beyond the Tabletop. Now in this video I'm carrying on with the rest of the retinue and I'm covering the Acolyte models. Now I've got three models here. The first one is a Servo Assassin. The second one I'm actually going to run as an Astro Militarum Priest, even though I could quite easily run him just as a regular Acolyte. And then the last one is more a Servitor Surf and carrying around all the Inquisitor's equipment along with the cursed book that she uses to summon the demon host. So first off, let's start with the Servo Assassin. This is a model I worked on over a year ago, just as a in-between project to work on, and I knew it would sort of be along the lines of for an inquisitorial retinue, but that wasn't really a dedicated project that I was working on. So this was just something that I knew I wanted to do, and I sort of had the inspiration to do it, so I just went about and made it. However, it's a great addition to the retinue that I've been creating. So the base model itself comes from the Lord of the Rings Hobbit range, which is the Goblin Warriors. So I just found one that was quite suitable, just based on its rough arm posture and pose. Then I cut off his head and added on a skull, and then just green stuffed it all the way around to merge it with the rest of the body. Then the next step was to add in the chainswords. These were from the Astro Militarum kit, which you can still see from the little symbol on the side. I've always been debating about whether to shave them off so I could just have like a hazard stripe going all the way along but I've decided against that for the time being or at least on this one because I might go about and make a couple more of these so if you're interested in a full in-depth step-by-step tutorial let me know because that might be something I'll do down the line. So when it came to mounting on I just had to cut the model at the wrist and then move the chainsaw handle and then just pose it all suitably in a pose that I was quite happy with. Now for the piston detail on the arms, this is from different sized styrene rod and then I slightly drilled into the larger one to make it a bit more telescopic so I could mount the smaller rod inside the larger rod. Now I mounted that to the chainsaw and there's a larger circular disc that's just come from Plasticard using a punch and die set. If you don't have that you could just use styrene rod and cut a thin slice. Then I've just added on some extra flesh using green stuff so it looks like the pistons are coming out of the arm. I then created a dune style heart plug which I mounted to the chest and that's just from different sizes of plastic sheet. Again using a punch and die set to create the discs of plastic that I needed to the right size. For the head detail I drilled out the eye socket ever so slightly and then again mounting a plastic disc using the punch and die set and that will represent the servo electronic eye and then using a knife and a scribing tool I then carefully etched in a line all the way around the head so this is going to represent the fact that the top of the skull can actually come open and the skull has been cut all the way around and then again using my knife and scribing tool I created a small keyhole into the forehead because that is how the skull will unlock now the key for the skull is mounted on the back of the model. Now for this I created a press mold from a reliquy that appears on a Primaris Space Marine. Now I didn't want to cut up the model so I just created a press mold which allows me to create a small replica of that detail. And then I made a couple of rivets from my punch and die set so it just looks like the key reliquy has been bolted through the skin. And then the last piece of detail of two wires that go from the skull to the back of the body. Now this is just some guitar wire and the guitar wire has a sort of thick inner wire and like some small wire going all the way around for outside. So this is just the outside wire pulled off which gives you that nice kind of curling shape to your wire. And with that mounted in place that was this model finished. So that's the servo assassin done. I'll put him to one side and we can talk about the next one. The next model is Brother Matthias, who is a priest, and I can run him either as an Astro Militarum priest or as an Inquisitorial Acolyte, but thematically he's always part of the Inquisitorial retinue. Now I didn't have to do too much in terms of the base model, because it was simply quite fantastic as it was. He comes from the Chaos Space Marine Dark Apostle set, and this is one of the Dark Acolytes. To try and imperial fire him slightly, I added on these two imperial eagle wings either side of the censure, and that actually creates the Astro Militarum symbol, which is the skull with a wing on either side. Now, I believe the etched wings 
was something that Forge World used to produce, but sadly they don't do it anymore. And if we turn around, you can see another smaller version of that brass eagle that I've attached to a chainsaw. So I decided to change some of the details to do with the handle of a chainsaw using some plastic card and some spare bit and then using a strip of green stuff to create a harness that will hold the chainsaw to his belt. Now there was a tiny chaos symbol just here hanging off of his belt which I shaved off. I decided not to put anything in that place because I didn't want to fuss at the model with too much extra detail. And as you can see that model looks really great on his own. You don't actually need to go too crazy in terms of converting him up because the model is pretty perfect just as it is. Now the last model is the one that had the most work. This is the Servitor Surf, who is carrying all the extra equipment for the Inquisitor. As I mentioned in the Inquisitor video, that actually to play her WYSIWYG as Eisenhorn, she needs to have a power sword and the book that she uses to summon Cherubiel, as well as some grenades. And as she's holding a pistol, I wanted her to have a pistol holster. Now all of those bits of detail seemed a bit too fussy on her as a model, so I decided to have a second model that will always be next to her that will represent her war gear and that led me to the idea of creating an extra acolyte who will be carrying around all of her equipment. Now originally this model was just going to be holding the book that she uses to summon her demon host but in the end I decided to make him carry all of her equipment because I liked the theming of that on the model. And again like the last model this is an acolyte from the Dark Apostle kit and there was also a chaos symbol just hanging down from the belt which I shaved off but this time adding in an inquisitorial symbol which is from an old Forge World brass etched kit. Now looking at the back I've got the book which actually comes from the chaos dark apostle himself he's holding it up in the air so I carefully cut that out of his hand and just mounted him onto the plate. Now there's some extra detail at the top and bottom that kind of got a bit destroyed when I was cutting it out of his hand. So I created a bookmark out of plastic card that just to cover up that detail. Now I bent the plastic card bookmark around and I just did that by just pressing it in place. However, when I glued it in place using some plastic glue, it snapped just at that point there, which seems to happen when you just bend the plastic card without heating it up and then applying plastic glue to it afterwards. So that's something to bear in mind if you're doing something similar. So that's why I then used a small bit of green stuff just to cover that up. On the book stand itself there used to be a chaos symbol so I just used some green stuff to cover that up both from the top and the bottom just so that that is invisible. Mostly I had to do it on this side because that was where you could see it the most. Then I added in some extra detail. I had a piece of reliquy that was donated to me by a friend. I believe the reliquy is from a Grey Knight's kit, but I'm not 100% certain. Then I was also donated Greyfax's sword. Now her sword doesn't have any detail in this middle section because that's where it's kind of glued to the body and some other detail covers that section up. So I decided to create some strips out of green stuff that I could then wrap around the model so it looks like those are bindings that are holding it in place onto the rest of the model. So that hides that kind of flaw in the detail while still allowing you to see the sword. Then on the other side I've added on a pouch and some grenades. These are all one piece from the Escher Necromunda gang. Then I've added in a scroll case which is going to be containing some sacred texts. The scroll case is made out of a piece of plastic rod. Then I've used some VMS paper, which is scale modeling paper. Then I carefully wrapped it around each end of the tube, which creates these nice little caps. Now you can't really do that with plastic tubing because plastic tubing would be too thick, but this gives you the exact effect that I was after, but weirdly just using paper. Now I just used some PVA glue to bind that in place onto that rod and then applied a few coats of PVA glue on top just to set it all in place. Now I talk about the VMS paper a little bit more in detail on my Inquisitor Lady Greyhorn video which you can check out in the top right hand corner but it is pretty straightforward to use. Now I had another Imperial Aquila in etched brass 
and I just clipped off one of the wings and I added that on to the top of the scroll just to give it some extra detail. Now the last piece of detail that I made is a pistol holster for the dueling pistol that my Inquisitor Lady Greyhorn carries. So this was just actually a spare piece of resin that I had lying around and I liked the shape of it. Now I just sanded it down a little bit to refine the shape and create a little end piece both here and where the butt of the gun will go at the very top. Now to create the illusion that the holster is empty I just used a knife to cut away some of that resin at the very bottom which will be accentuated with a dark wash in the paint phase. Now to create the holster flap I just used a small piece of plaster card and bent it over and made sure it was cut to shape and then I just took off some skull detail from another model and added it on here. And then lastly I just made a mounting clip at the very back just out of another small bit of plaster card. And there we have the completed inquisitorial surf. In terms of the basing of these models I've done it to tie it in with the rest of my inquisitorial retinue while still trying to theme it with my overall Krieg army which my inquisitors will fight alongside. However it's the same method that I've used on my assassins and my inquisitor so for that reason I've created some small stone slabs to set these models apart from my Krieg army. The stone slabs are just made from plaster card and then to create that muddy texture I've just done a mixture of baby powder and super glue and then dusting the whole base with some baby powder. Obviously you need to let that set and dry and then you just need to go in with some water and a brush just to remove any of the excess baby powder that might still be on the model. So that's all three Acolyte models built and finished and they'll be all ready for painting. If you've got any requests for sort of models you'd like to see converted up or like I said earlier maybe a more detailed step-by-step -step video guide on how to create your own servo assassin then just let me know in the comments below and I'll add it to my list. If you're enjoying this Inquisitor series there's still plenty more to come. I've got videos for my enforcer Manfred Wilson, uh, a cyber pet and the demon host Essosas which is by far my most complicated conversion I've ever done so make sure to be subscribed to check out those. If you want to support the channel you can back me over on Patreon or use my Element Games affiliate link. You can find those down in the description below. You can also check out my online store beyondthetabletop.com forward slash shop where I sell resin conversion kits for both inventory and vehicles. Thanks again for watching this video. Feel free to hit all the usual YouTube buttons to like and subscribe or follow my other social media platforms for regular updates with what I'm working on. That's all for now. Until the next time, take care.